abstinent. Councilor Baker. Councilor Siomo. Present. Councilor Flaherty. Councilor Jackson. Here. Councilor Lamatina. Councilor Linehan. Here. Councilor McCarthy. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor O'Malley. Here. Councilor Presley. Councilor Wu. Councilor Yancey. Here. And Councilor Zakem. Mr. President, we do have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. I've been informed by the clerk that a quorum is present. I would ask at this time for all counselors and guests to please rise. And I would ask uh, Councillor O'Malley to come to the podium and introduce today's clergy for uh, our invocation. Once the invocation is delivered, I would ask that all members and guests remain standing as Councillor O'Malley leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Councillor O'Malley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. It is my distinct honor to introduce our clergy member today. Uh, the Reverend Annie Rousseau is the community, pa community minister of Hope Central Church in Jamaica Plain, which is a wonderful, uh, terrific spiritual community, uh, which I invite everyone to attend a service there if you haven't already. Uh, many of you know Reverend Rousseau. She has been a tireless, uh, progressive activist and leader on issues for fairness and equality to housing, uh, in addition to being an a, uh, incredible activist. She also works for the Boston Metropolitan Housing Partnership. Uh, and she uh, and her family are dear friends to me. I've brought her every year since I've been on the council, and as long as she keeps saying yes, she will make that return of parents. But she's just a, a tremendous individual, real leader, and a, a bright light in this city that we all love so well. So please join me in welcoming Reverend Annie Rousseau. Thank you, Councillor O'Malley. Let us pray. God of every time and every place, grant us quiet hearts, hushed by compassion for one another, so that all we do and say is shaped by love. We give you thanks for all the blessings that come from your hand, especially for the invitation to live as your holy people. We pray today for the world, a world that is dedicated to wealth and possessions instead of equality and justice. We pray for all nations overwhelmed by war, violence, and injustice. Grant us your vision of peace and righteousness. We pray for the sick and those facing death. Send your spirit and your people to give comfort and hope. Bless these public servants that stand before you today and all those who set aside their private pursuits to serve the public good of all. Give them the wisdom to discern that larger good, gladness in seeking it and serving it, Realization that since we are all inescapably connected, we are also accountable to each other and to this earthly home we share. Give them courage enough to take the small daily steps toward fulfilling your grand dream for us all. May they be given the power of discernment to know what is right and good for all the citizens of Boston. Inspire them so that they may be the source of bold ideas. Grace them with sensitivity so that they may be compassionate leaders of our city. We ask your blessing, too, on their families, colleagues, and dedicated staff that supports them in their work. God of mercy, together with you and with each other, we strive to build a city where diversity is a source of enrichment, neighborhoods are respected and made strong, communities become more inclusive, a city that is beautiful, true, and worthy of your generosity to us. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, Reverend Ann Rousseau, for your inspiring message and uh, beautiful prayer. Uh, Councilor O'Malley? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you, Reverend Ann Rousseau, and uh, thank you, Councilor O'Malley, for your introduction and for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we have a very, we have quite a busy presentation schedule here today. Um, it's generally, um, we only have one or two, but today we, we will have more, and I just want to um, have an opportunity to let everybody be recognized at today's uh, meeting. But uh, first of all, 
Uh, we have the uh, 2015 Shattuck Award recipient. And um, the, the Shattuck Awards are granted to uh, those individuals who work for the city of Boston and have made a, a life commitment to improving things, to improving their department, to improving Boston for all of us and for all the citizens. Uh, we had a nice presentation ceremony earlier in the Curley Room, at the James Michael Curley Room, and uh, recognized individually all accounts that spoke to the recipients. So at this time, uh, I'd like to thank the Municipal Research Bureau for continuing to recognize uh, public servants and what they do and the hard work and dedication that they provide the services for all of our citizens. Uh, I'd like the recipients, if they would, to come on up and then we'll take a group photo with all the city councilors here at the DS. Are, the, are we here? No. Oh, to my right. Councilors, you want to join us? Please. Come on up, see, right up. Everybody come, come right up. And all the recipients line right up in here, and the counselors will line up behind you and beside you. Yep, <laughs> great. <laughs> Does anybody want to say a few words on behalf of the recipients? No way. We no. Won't. <laughs> Just to say a few words on behalf of the recipients. Michael will do it. You should sit down with the No. Okay. They're a quiet group. They're a dedicated group. They're the hard, hardest working group that we're recognizing. Yep. As Councilor McCarthy said, we need to get them back to work. <laughs> Am I standing in front of anybody? Please. Right. Let's give them a big hand, the 2015 recipients. A uh, council will. <laughs> uh, I've asked Councilor Wu to come uh, to the DS to um, also recognize the group that is with us here today. Uh, we had a, a recognition and celebration in the Curly Room and also one in the Pimonte Room. Councilor Wu. And could Councilor Presley also come up? Oh, I'm sorry. And Councilor McCarthy. Thank you. And Councilor McCarthy and Councilor Presley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we are honored today to host the organizers and models involved in uh, two very important causes. There's the Walk to End Lupus and Runway for Mom, both events happening this Saturday, one in the morning, the walk in the morning, and the fashion show in the evening to raise funds against, uh, to, for breast cancer awareness and to fight lupus. So I want to thank all of the, the models for joining us today. We had a very nice ceremony earlier in the Piemonte Room um, and wanted to also hand it over to my co-sponsors of this, Councilor McCarthy and Councilor Presley. Uh, thank you uh, for inc including me and for the opportunity uh, to honor the good work of these women. I just want to uh, you know, join my colleagues in celebrating you, congratulating you, and thanking you for all you're doing to raise awareness, uh, but also to build a community uh, to support survivors and those who have overcome, and also to support those that are still suffering. So uh, God bless and congratulations, and uh, look forward to your event. Hi, everyone. I'll be very brief. Just thank you very much for being up here. And clearly, this is the best looking group we've had up in this day in a long, long time.
Uh, at this time, uh, get a little order here. I'd like to uh, ask um, Councilor Yancey to, to come to the DS so that he can make a presentation. Is uh, Ed Gary here? Please come to the DS. I want to ask Ed Gary Jr. to join us at this time. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, feels, I feel very comfortable up here. Take your time, Ed. Take Don't your get time. too comfortable. Take, take your time. <laughs> Don't be scared. Be afraid. Be afraid. While Ed Gary is uh, finding his way to the podium, I just want to thank him and his mother for... Mother-in-law. Mother-in-law for all that they've done. In fact, is it okay to invite your mother-in-law? Absolutely. Please mention Gretchen. Barbara Carney. Uh, Barbara uh, Carney, can you come and join us, please? And Ed's significant other, um, Gretchen, Gretchen uh, is not here at this time, but she's certainly um, been a, played a major role in his life. It's my honor to recognize Edward Gary, Jr., He's a man committed to his community and works hard at what he does. Uh, he was born at the St. Margaret's Hospital in Dorchester, a graduate of the Boston Public School System, graduated from the Boston and um, from the Bunker Hill Community College. Of course, he had A plus averages, high honors, and computer technology network options. Also a member of Alpha Kappa Mu Honor Society. He has University of Massachusetts, Bachelor's of Art of the College of uh, Community Service Programs. Ed currently serves as the Deputy Director of Communications and External Affairs Division of the Suffolk County Sheriff Department. Uh, he is a software expert uh, who has worked his way up from public information to Deputy Director in the Sheriff's Department. He manages the daily operations and produces a weekly BNN TV cable show, uh, maintains uh, div the division's website, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and all community relations. I really need you on my team, Ed. <laughs> he has uh, also been a volunteer. 
And he sets a fine example for every resident of the city of Boston. Serves as president of the Fields Corner Civic Association, and under his leadership, the association was awarded the National Night Out Top Crime Watch Group of the Year for the city of Boston. He also was a clerk for the Dorchester Day Parade Committee, so he made sure that each of us paid our dues when we walked in the Dorchester Parade. <laughs> he also uh, chaired the Dorchester Parade Committee's essay contest and is a member of the Dorchester Tree Lighting Holiday Celebration Committee. As vice president of the Fields Corner Main Street Board of Directors, he's been able to inspire uh, business development in Fields Corner and encourage all of the merchants in that area to participate in the beautification and development of Fields Corner. The member of the Ward 16 Democratic Committee, and I know that our clerk, Maureen Feeney, is very acquainted with Mr. Gary, in that capacity, and others. Uh, treasurer of the Bunker Hill Community College Alumni Association, member of the All Dorchester Sports League Board of Directors, crew member for the Mayor's Game of the Week. And I could go on and on and on. He, of course, has received many awards. Uh, some of them include in 2011 the BNN TV Spotlight Producers Award, the 2011 National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, 34th. Boston New England Emmy Award nominee for the Mayor's Game of the Week. And finally, 2012 Boston Main Street's Fields Corner Volunteer of the Year recipient. I could go on and on and on, but we do have a council meeting today. Uh, I just want to, on a very personal note, thank uh, Ed Gary Jr. for all his work and his selfless efforts to improve the quality of life for everyone in the city of Boston and he serves as a model to each and every one of us. So without any further ado, I'd like to present Edward Gary Jr. to say some brief remarks before I give him the city council resolution. Ed Gary. Good afternoon, Council President. Good afternoon, Councilors. Good afternoon, family and friends. As m many of you are aware that we are, my Gretchen, Gretchen is already in Florida, and I'm in transit right now trying to clean up a few pieces so that I can go back and join her down in Florida where we, where we just bought a house probably about two months ago. So this to me is bittersweet. When I get to Florida, the first thing I'm going to do is see what I can do to become community involved down there because, as the counselor Yancey had mentioned, it's in my blood. That's the way I was. That's the way I was raised. And I'm going to continue to give back because it's the right thing to do for the community. Um, we go back a long way. A lot of you counselors that are sitting here right now, we, we've had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, and I really appreciate the support and the energy and the time that you've given to me, and I'm grateful for receiving this proclamation today. Thank you. Councilors, would you all come up, please, and we'll take a photo. Uh, just to make it official, City of Boston and City Council, official resolution. Be resolved that the Boston City Council extends its congratulations to Edward Gary Jr. in recognition of your enthusiasm, commitment, and diligent leadership in successfully f performing the volunteer duties and responsibilities as president of the Fields Corner Civic Association, and be it further resolved that the Boston City Council extends its best wishes for continued success and that this resolution be duly signed by the president of the city council and attested to by the clerk of the city of Boston. It's my honor and privilege on behalf of not just the city council, but the city of Boston to make this presentation to Edward Gary, Jr.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ed, wish you the best down in Florida. Congratulations. At this time, I'd like to ask Councilor Jackson, please, to uh, come to the DS to make a uh, 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 final um, presentation here today to Adam Wines. Is Adam here? Adam, come up. <laughs> Councilor Jackson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. I am very, very excited, and, and stat in fact, I'm, I'm ecstatic uh, to be able to uh, acknowledge what we do right in the city of Boston. Oftentimes in this body, we focus on gaps. Uh, we focus on things that uh, need to be fixed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, nothing needs to be fixed with Adam Wimes. Um, he is a graduate of Madison Park Vocational Technical High School. He is 26 years old, and he is the executive chef at the Lenox Hotel in the city of Boston. I had the occasion of um, having some adult beverages with him the other day. He's an adult. Um, and we actually watched the Patriots game. Uh, we ran into each other in, in the, um, in, on, on Boylston Street. And it was interesting to me that when I looked at his journal, the journal that he was carrying, on the cover it said, you can do anything. And uh, he has shown uh, that uh, a young man um, can move mountains. A young man can pay his dues and actually run not only one hotel, uh, but he actually is responsible for three hotels and a new one that is actually opening at 26 years old. Um, in a uh, in addition, and his, his mom and his grandmom are over there beaming in, in the audience. I, I would just say also, um, there's a saying that says, be who you needed when you were young. There's also a saying that says, you need to lift as you climb. And he's doing that. So I said, hey, Adam, you know, we should go back and do some stuff at Madison. He says, I go back every single month. What are you talking about? And the students from the culinary, uh, the culinary program from Madison Park are actually in the audience. I want to acknowledge them also. And just lastly, I think it's, it, it's awesome to not only dream it, not, not only aspire, uh, aspire it, um, but to actually be able to see what success looks like uh, early on in life. And so, again, I, I'm just uh, so, so happy. I learned about this online. Um, I, I saw an article about him, and I told Michelle, my chief of staff, I was like, give me the number to that hotel. Um, I'm, I'm going to pick up the phone, um, and we're going to acknowledge uh, this young man. I also just want to note, at a time when people are so cynical about public service, at a time when people are so cynical about the great work that's happening in the Boston public schools every single day, and the people who work so hard, it is so awesome to see what's on the other side of the rainbow, to see what happens when we fund it the right way, when they have great, dedicated teachers who do the right thing by these young people. When we do that, we actually not only have one Adam Wimes, but we have 57,000 Adam Wimes in the city of Boston. And that's, to me, uh, which we should be working on every single day. So I just want to, I want to thank these two women here, mom and grandmom. I want to thank Tanya Larkin um, for... At Madison Park Vocational, uh, Voc Vocational Technical High School, and I'll just tell you, he was offered 
a scholarship from another program, and they gave him a hard time. Even though he had the scholarship in hand, they wanted to make him do something extra. Even though he had already paid his dues and he had already worked. And she was there for him and guided him in the right direction. And this young man uh, took this job. I'm not even going to say the other really, really nice institution that he said no to. Um, but he actually uh, said no um, to a top tier chain um, in uh, the city of Boston that's building something new. Um, and again, this is what success looks like. And this is literally what it's all about in the city of Boston around public education and what we what we can and should be doing on a regular basis. So I just want Adam to come forward. So he talked to me for the whole game. And then now I'm sure he's going to pretend like he's shy. Um, but again, this is a young man who on a day to day ba day to day basis works in the kitchen directing 50 people who are all older than him. And that's only in his kitchen. He has uh, multiple kitchens around the city of Boston. I give to you uh, the incomparable, the bad brother, Adam Wimes. I just want to say thank you to everyone and uh, I want all the students from Madison to keep pushing and follow your dreams. You can make anything happen. Thank you. And so I will read uh, the official recognition. It's an official resolution. It says, be it resolved that the Boston City Council extends its congratulations to Adam Wimes in recognition of his trailblazing culinary career and new title as executive chef at the Lenox Hotel. In addition to his dedication to the community of Roxbury, since his time at Madison Park Vocational Technical High School to his current role as a mentor who inspires our students to accomplish future career aspirations. And be it further resolved that the Boston City Council declares today, October 21st, as Adam Wimes Day in the city of Boston. Oh yeah, actually, we, we, uh, Mr. President, we we will request that uh, we actually, as a council, get to test how great of a chef that he is at some point in the very near future. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Councilor Jackson. Uh, thank you to the Wimes family and to the educators at uh, Madison Park and also to Adams. Adam. Uh, thank you all for the presentations here today. Uh, it's an honor as the president to have the opportunity to present so many capable and achieving people throughout our city. Um, Madam Clerk, approval of the minutes. If there are no corrections to be made, the minutes of last meeting will stand approved. Seeing and hearing no objections, the minutes are so approved. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, I'd like to recognize that Councilor Wu and Councilor Baker are also present. Docket number 1657, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend funds totaling $180,000 received from the individuals, organizations, local and private businesses for the purpose of funding the Immigrant Integration and Empowerment Initiative, the New American Library Corners Initiative, Immigration Advice Clinics, 
and the English for New Bostonians initiative. <coughs> Uh, docket 1657 will be assigned to the Committee on Healthy Women, Families, and Communities. Docket number 1658, message and order authorizing the Police Commissioner to accept and expend a grant in the amount of $53,730 from the Office of Violence Against Women via the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. This FY15 VAWA STOP grant made award is uh, is made for the purpose of continuing to fund civilian domestic violence adv uh, advocate position which is responsible for serving victims in the areas of east boston and jamaica plain councilor murphy mr president thank you uh, at this time i'd like to move suspension of the rules on passage of dock at 1658 obviously it's a serious issue of violence against women so holding a hearing and holding up the money would probably be the wrong move at this time. This is an FY15 continuation grant sure. that funds a civilian domestic violence advocate for the neighborhoods of East Boston and Jamaica Plain. So at this time, I'd like to move suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1658. Thank you. Okay. Um, th thank you, Councilor Murphy. Uh, Councilor Murphy moves suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1658. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. The ayes have it. Docket 1658 has passed. Uh, Councilor Presley. Uh, I missed my moment. I move for reconsideration of docket number 1657. Thank you very much. Uh, I move to suspend the rules and pass docket 1658, authorizing the city of Boston to accept and expend funds totaling $180,000 received from individuals, organizations, local and private businesses for the purposes of funding the Immigrant Integration and Empowerment Initiative, the New American Library Corners Initiative, Immigration Advice Clinics, and the English for New Bostonians initiative in order to make these resources available for upcoming events. There are five programs that will be funded by this grant. We Are Boston Anniversary Gala, Immigrant Integration and Empowerment Initiative, the New Americans Library Corners Initiative, Immigration Advice Clinics, and again, the English for New Bostonians initiative, all worthy endeavors um, deserving of this investment, and I move for uh, suspension and passage. Uh, Council Presley moves suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1657. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed nay. The ayes have it. Docket 1657 has passed. Madam Clerk. Docket Thank number 1659, message in order to declare surplus city-owned former public works department parcel property known as Washburn Street, Dorchester, 711 square feet of vacant land to transfer care, custody, management, and control of said property to the Public Facilities Commission. Um, could you also read 1660, ma'am? Thank you, Mr. President. Docket number 1660, message in order to declare surplus city-owned public works department parcel property known as Howell Street, Dorchester, 1,288 square feet of vacant land, district to transfer care, custody, management, and control of said property to the Public Facilities Commission. Uh, docket 1659 and 1660 will be assigned to the Committee on Economic Development, Planning, and Labor. Madam Clerk. Fourth uh, you can read all of them. Okay. Um, docket 1661. Communication was received from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation regarding the plan bearing a certificate that the highway division has abandoned a section of the state highway. Um, 1661 will be placed on file. <coughs> Docket 1662, notice was received from the mayor of his absence from the city from 7 a.m. Saturday to October 17, 2015, until 4 p.m. Tuesday, October 20th, 2015. Uh, docket 1662 will be placed on file. Mr. President, would you like me to read? 16? Yeah, if you could read 1663 through 1665. Thank you. 
Docket number 1663, notice was received from the city clerk in accordance with Chapter 6 of the Ordinances of 1979 regarding action taken by the mayor on papers acted upon by the city council at its meeting of September 16, 2015. Docket number 1664, notice was received from the city clerk in accordance with Chapter 6 of the Ordinances of 1979 regarding action taken by the mayor on papers acted upon by the city council at its meeting of September 30th, 2015. And docket number 1665. Notice was received from the city clerk in accordance with chapter 6 of the ordinances of 1979 regarding action taken by the mayor on papers acted upon by the city council at its meeting of October 7th, 2015. A docket 1663, 1664, and 1665 will be placed on file. I'll read the next three. The next three, um, 1666 through 68. Thank you. Docket number 1666. Notice is received from the mayor of the appointment of Jane Moss as a member of the Back Bay Architectural Commission for a term expiring December 31st, 2019. Docket number 1667. Notice is received from the mayor of the appointment of John Christensen as a member of the Back Bay Architectural Commission for a term expiring December 31st, 2018. And docket number 1668, notice was received from the mayor of the appointment of Patricia Quinn as a member of the Back Bay Architectural Commission for a term expiring December 31st, 2018. Uh, docket 1666, 1667, and 1668 will be placed on file. Uh, Madam Clerk, matters recently heard for possible action, please. Docket number 1406, message and order authorizing the Transportation Department to accept and expend a grant not to exceed $666,074 from the Federal Highway Administration, passed through the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, known as MassDOT, to be used to fund 80% of the design and engineering service costs for traffic management improvements at 15 intersections in the area of Blue Hill Avenue and Warren Street. Our chair recognizes the chair of the Committee on City, Neighborhood Services, and Veterans Affairs, Councilor McCart. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, a week ago today, uh, we had a, a hearing on docket number uh, 1406. Uh, this is additional money from the feds, uh, fed through uh, MassDOT, uh, to continue the work of Blue Hill Ave, on Blue Hill Ave, and Warren Streets. Uh, this is now in design. It's about 80% design. Um, this money will be used directly towards completing the design and getting shovels in the ground in uh, FY18. Um, I, I look to have uh, the suspension of the rules and passage of docket number 1406. Um, thank you, Councilor McCarthy. Councilor Jackson. Uh, thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Councilor McCarthy for his hard work on this, also uh, for a speedy hearing. Um, if any of you have come uh, from Mattapan uh, to, <laughs> uh, to um, the, the intersection of Warren Street and Blue Hill Ave, uh, it is a new day in the city of Boston, ladies and gentlemen. All of those folks who used to go on 95 and go around the city, absolutely all of them are actually driving up Blue Hill Avenue now. Um, I, I, we've always known it was the fastest way. Um, I don't know who told them, um, but they actually know now. Um, so it is, it, it is critical that we retime the lights, that we look at the intersections, and that we actually look at uh, public safety for pedestrians um, who are going to be crossing. So I think a uh, really good time uh, to do this. And um, I really want to uh, want to thank um, the uh, the chair of this committee uh, be, uh, for his uh, hard work. Thank you so much, and I'll be voting in the affirmative. Um, thank you, Councilor Jackson. Councilor McCarthy moves acceptance of his committee report and passage of Docket 1406. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Docket 1406 has passed. Docket number 1267. Order for hearing regarding pilot contributions by higher and medical education institutions. Uh, that matter will remain in committee. Madam Clerk? Motions. Order. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Motions order. I, I'm getting there, Madam Clerk. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Motions, orders, and resolutions. Docket number 1669. Council Baker offered the following resolution, <clears throat> recognizing the service and sacrifice of Bolslav 
Bekunis in World War II with the dedication of a hero square at the intersection of Sudan Street and Dorchester Avenue. Chair recognizes Councilor Baker on docket 1669. Thank you, Mr. President. First was put in your, your packet, and I would also like to um, suspend the rules and pass. This is a pretty straightforward hero square on Dorchester Avenue and Sudan Street. Okay, um, thank you, Councilor Baker. Um, does the changing of the rules at all, um, of the language, Madam Clerk, is it adoption or pass? It's move for substitution and it's. Okay, so that's what we have. Uh, Councilor Baker moves suspension of the rules and adoption of docket 1669. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. The ayes have it. Docket 1669 has been adopted. Docket number 1670, Councilor Lamatina, off of the following order for hearing regarding notification of parking restrictions. Chair recognizes Councilor Lamatina on 1670. To have a hearing to this, this discuss expanded city notification and alerts concerning parking restrictions. As you know, parking is an important concern for the residents of the city of Boston. And this administration has made great strides in utilizing technology to inform residents of parking restrictions and also provide notice by signage. However, in my district, many residents do not use their cars every day. And when they park their cars, hopefully it's legally, and then they come to find out there's a temporary signage, particularly we saw this during moving day, uh, where uh, because of the temporary signs, they were told. So what I'm looking to do is just to have a hearing to examine additional ways so we can alert residents of uh, these temporary parking restrictions and look to expand the notification process. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you, Council Lamatina. Would you please add my name, Madam Clerk? And add uh, Councilor Siomos, Councilor Flaherty's, Councilor Yancey's name, Councilor Zakim, Councilor Romali, Councilor McCarthy, Councilor Murphy, Councilor Presley. All right. Add those names. And that docket will be placed in the City and Neighborhood Services, the Committee on Neighborhood Service and Veterans Affairs. Did you want to speak? Oh, oh madam. Councilor Wu. You just wanted to add your name? Yeah. And please add Councilor Wu's name, Madam Clerk. Did you get that? Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk. Oh, that you did add Ma uh, Councilor Wu's name? Okay, thank you. Did you want to speak on? Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> one of those days. <laughs> Docket number 1671. Is that assigned to you? No, it hasn't. Yes, I did. But um, Docket 1670 is assigned to the Committee on City, Neighborhood Services, and Veterans Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It is Sorry my pleasure, Madam that. Clerk. Sorry about this. <laughs> 1671, Council Lamatina and Linehan. Offer the following ordinance regarding street performers in the city of Boston. Chair recognizes Council Lamatina on docket 1671. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the purpose of this ordinance is, uh, is to have reasonable regulation for street performers in the city of Boston in order to ensure access to public areas for all. This is an issue that I have been working on for the last few years in regards to numerous complaints that I have received, both from residents and performers. Uh, this proposal is not anti-street performers, but is rather as helping street performers from getting bullied as well as residents being solicited. We have received several complaints from both, like I said, street performers, residents who have felt harassed and threatened from some of the other performances that are utilizing public space, particularly in the funeral hall area. Many residents have also complained about noise issues as well. In fact, there was an email from a tourist who was sent to the mayor's office the other day referring um, some of the uh, issues that I'm concerned about. Um, this audit is designed to help performers work with the city to share space and abide by the rules involving noise, pedestrian access, and solicitation. Um, this proposal would ensure equal access for street performers 
while maintaining accessibility for public places. Um, Mr. President, for years I've been trying to, issue, to deal with some of the issues over there. They always, the previous administration always told me that there was a memo, which I have a copy of, that there was nothing we could do, that they have the right. I've been working with street performers um, to come up with this audience. It's similar to an audience that they do, uh, they have in Cambridge. I think it's the right thing to do. I'm just looking forward to having a hearing, a working hearing to discuss some of the issues out there. So it'll make it much easier for our performers to go to Faneuil Hall and be able to have a variety of street performers. So thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Council LaMartina, and thank you for allowing me to co-sponsor that with you. Uh, Councillor McCarthy. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you and uh, Council LaMartina for bringing this up. Um, uh, Council LaMartina and I, and you as well, have had this conversation many times. I think it's really time that we have this, uh, this hearing. Um, this clearly is not anti-art, and it's certainly not anti-street performers. I think that uh, the Faneuil Hall Marketplace, that's a, a part of are really are part of our fabric. But what this is about, uh, for me anyway, is offensive language, offensive uh, music, uh, the music that's so loud that you can't walk by without, you know, you can't even have a conversation in Faneuil Hall. And what it's doing is it's taking away from Faneuil Hall, not adding to it. So I'm looking forward to working with the performers as well as uh, the city, try to figure out exactly, uh, you know, how we can regulate and make everything better for the performers as well as our visitors from around the world. And I look forward to having the hearing, and please uh, add my name. Uh, thank you, Councilor McCarthy. Councilor Presley. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, very much appreciate uh, the framer that this is in no way anti-street performer or anti-arts. Um, in the same way that we are uh, negotiating how do we coexist and share our roadways, we also, uh, it's certainly beneficial to uh, have a discussion about how we coexist uh, and share our public spaces. But certainly our street performers um, our catalyst for uh, economic vitality, our creative economy, they incentivize foot traffic. And I would argue that, you know, very often, although we champion uh, the arts and want the, benefic the, the benefits of the arts, we're not always creating a climate that supports the actual artists, um, especially uh, in affording to live in this city. Uh, many of them are busking and are in Faneuil Hall um, because they can't make a living uh, any other way. Uh, this is a way in which, you know, that it, for many, this is how they make a living. Um, so we have to find a way to coexist. Um, and I just want to thank our street performers for all that they uh, contribute to the vitality and the vibrancy of our city and for incentivizing foot traffic into Faneuil Hall when for many years it was depressed uh, and people were not shopping and were not patronizing there. So uh, you are an incredible asset to our city, and we thank you for your creative contributions. And I do appreciate the opportunity for us to have a discussion um, about how we can coexist. Um, so, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Presley. Councilor Wu. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank the two sponsors of this for bringing this issue to the council, and especially to Councilor LaMatina for his work over several years on this. Um, I just want to note that as someone who came became interested in government simply because I was so frustrated about permitting and licensing for my small business. Anytime I see more permitting, I get a little bit, um, just a little bit cautious. Now, I, Councilor Alamatina shared with me one of the emails that came in about this, some really incredibly inappropriate, horrible, racist, um, very inappropriate behavior that we don't want to see on our city streets. Uh, I, so my perspective in all this will be, how can we make sure that our streets are welcoming, uh, but not writing policy for a, you know, very small, uh, for a potentially small group of bad apples that would have effects citywide. As the Arts and Culture Committee Chair, I've heard from performers and artists and everyone that we need to have more and we need to uh, make people unafraid of per participating and performing. So this will be a great conversation. I look forward to participating and thank you again. Uh, thank you, Councilor Wu. Councilor Jackson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I, I rise, um, to just say caution. Um, first, I want to caution us that when we speak about offensive language in the United States of America, there's the First Amendment. And some things that we actually find to be offensive um, actually are covered by, um, by the, the first, uh, first Amendment. Um, and there is a great deal of case law that actually supports buskers relative to their First Amendment rights. Um, in addition, I think we also need to look at um, 
arts and culture, not only as cute or uh, only arts and culture, it's employment for people. There are many people who are professional artists and literally would not have a job or a way to take care of themselves or their family, be it not for uh, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so I think um, uh, in terms of the types of music and the types of uh, speech, the great part about the United States of America uh, is that you actually, as repulsive as some things are, you actually get to say uh, what's on, on your mind, ask Donald Trump. Um, and so we, we, we should, I think we as a, as a body, and I, I agree with um, Councilor Wu, um, we live in a, a place, and, and, and I, I, it scares me that the Public Works Department would be the department to be connecting with artists. That actually really does scare me. Um, I, I think that uh, we should uh, be looking at this through the lens, to me, of a Bill of Rights, a Bill of Rights for street performers that actually speaks through to the, the rights that should be there uh, rather than from a regulatory lens. Um, I do want to thank um, my, my colleagues for bringing this up. It's important. And it got brought up with Ashkenazi. Right? So these are folks who we gave, a, and I, I've heard uh, Council Murphy speak about an organization that we gave, we sign off on a contract, and then they go and do, do wrong by folks. I want us to be cautious to not step in to the same pile of Ashkenazi um, that, is, that is out there. Um, I think, uh, again, these individuals make our city better. And they're really the character of the city of Boston. And I, I think the one other piece I would note is that when we look at when businesses were shut down in Faneuil Hall, and that's the same thing for, I'm sorry, for the push carts. I don't mean to bring, bring it all in there. But folks, when there was nothing but a cell phone store up in, up in downtown, folks with a push cart and some folks with a, with a boom box and some love for music were doing their thing. I see hundreds of people who are being entertained. Um, and, and the great part about street performing, that's a little bit different than other places, is that you can actually vote with your feet. When the performance doesn't work for you, you get to walk away. So I think we should really uh, proceed with caution in terms of the regulatory environment uh, for these uh, individuals who are, I believe, um, add to uh, the city of Boston, and also think about the environment that we create with all of the colleges and universities and the amazing musical talent uh, that we have in the city of Boston. Thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Mr. President. I look forward to the hearing, but proceed with caution. Thank you, uh, thank you Councilor Jackson. Councilor Zakem. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank uh, you and Council Lamatina for bringing this uh, important matter forward. I will. Uh, Leave specifics on the First Amendment issues, I think, to the hearing where we'll hear you know, from uh, lawyers far more learned than I, and I'll say my other colleagues who are lawyers here, we may not be uh, experts in this field, um, but it is an important consideration. I'm glad Councilor Jackson raised it. I would say, while we talk over and over about encouraging the arts and the commerce that brings in the city, we do need to proceed with caution on this, and it would be my, um, my hope that we think more about this on a broader scale on access, and as Councilor Presley said, sharing our sidewalks as well as we're talking about shared streets um, for performers, for residents, for tourists, for people who are patronizing many of our businesses across the city, uh, for the disabled community that sometimes, um, you know, these obstructions that I think I certainly don't take as seriously because I can sort of just, you know, slide around them, making sure that we're really focusing on that. And when people are setting up, whether it's in Faneuil Hall or in Copley Square or um, by the library in Copley, which I would also... Um, throw in, uh, I think it is important to look at the use of these spaces, um, not just for performing, but where we have skateboarders and rollerbladers who are not just passing through in transit, but sort of making some of these public spaces we have um, arenas, so to speak, for tricks that I think are certainly more dangerous and can be more disruptive to people on the streets. So I applaud uh, this hearing order. I look forward to getting into it. And just a little forewarning, I'm going to bring up a little bit more about uh, the physical access issues as much as I think the... Um, on two fronts, I think as, as a regulatory body, we might have more success regulating that than the content, but also I think it's uh, 
for me, walking through the neighborhoods that I represent, that is the biggest issue I see with performance, with other use of the sidewalk. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Council Zakem. Council Yancey. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. One of the disadvantages of coming near to last, if not last, is that uh, much has already been said about the topic. Um, and I ascribe myself, quite frankly, to many of the comments of my colleagues. The only thing I want to add is that uh, the obvious, that is, we live in a very diverse city, a city that uh, has become a destination uh, for uh, nationalities from literally all over the world, and we should celebrate that diversity. Uh, we should also recognize, as has already been mentioned, that many of these street performers actually add in a positive way to the ambiance of the city we know as Boston. We may not always understand the art that's on display, uh, but we should embrace it and encourage it. Just as we've already demonstrated our support for the Caribbean Carnival that attracts more than half a million people uh, to the heart of the city of Boston every year, we celebrate uh, Gay Pride, uh, an annual uh, parade, uh, St. Patrick's Day, and celebrations which installs the, uh, the virtue of arts coming from virtually every nation around the world. So we do have to proceed with caution, but we also uh, have to uh, recognize that without the willingness of these performers to take substantial risk, and I, I've seen some of the performers there's substantial physical risk to entertain the public, that uh, you know, we should be supportive and, and find out what we can do to make it easier, not more difficult, for us to have this type of entertainment in the city of Boston. My only regret, Mr. President, is that we don't have uh, performers uh, in every neighborhood of the city of Boston. They seem to be concentrated in certain areas. And I'd like to encourage them to take a look at uh, continuing where they are, but also look at opportunities for expansion so we can make other parts of the city of Boston real destinations the way they've done uh, for Faneuil Hall and other places. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Council Yancey. <clears throat> Hold your applause. Thank you. Uh, docket 1671 is assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. Madam Clerk, personnel orders, please. Docket number 1672, Council Lenny. Council McCarthy moves McCarthy. suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 1672. All those in favor say aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Docket 1672 has passed. Docket number 1673, Council Lenny. Council McCarthy moves passage. suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 1673. All those in favor say aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Docket 1673 has passed. Uh, Madam Clerk, um, there are no lay farmers. Okay. Uh, is anybody wishing to remove a matter from the green sheets may do so at this time. Councilor McCarthy. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Um, I would like to remove uh, docket number 1430. It's on page 4 of 16. Would you like me to read it into the record, Mr. President? Good. In the committee, is it 1430? 1430, Madam Clerk, yes. In the Committee on City and Neighborhood Services and Veterans Affairs, docket number 1430, sponsored by Councilor O'Malley, resolution urging utility regulators to ensure that Boston residents have access to FIOS. It was referred to committee on September 2nd, 2015. It was a hearing on October 14th. Uh, 2015. Uh, the matter is appropriate, appropriately before the body. Councilor McCarthy, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I'm uh, looking to have this uh, docket number 1430 uh, uh, suspended and passed, but through the chair, uh, the sponsor of the document, uh, Councilor O'Malley, uh, certainly would like to have something to say. Uh, thank you, Councilor uh, McCarthy. Councilor O'Malley. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I often have something to say, so I appreciate you uh, introducing me. Um, 
This is a resolution that I filed on August 26th that was officially before, introduced before this body on September 2nd. I believe every one of you co-sponsored it. Uh, a hearing was held through the leadership of Councilor McCarthy uh, and the Committee on Na City Neighborhood Services and Veterans Affairs on Wednesday, oct uh, Octo uh, October 14th. Uh, it was a very well attended hearing. There was participation from many, if not most of you, and I know all staffs were present in monitoring it. Um, the speakers at the hearing included Joshua Franklin Hodge, who's the Chief Information Technology Officer for the City of Boston, as well as Mike Lynch, who runs the city's cable office, Peter Bauman, who is the Vice President of Government Affairs for Verizon, and Stephanie Lee, who is the Regional Director for Public Affairs, also for Verizon, and then Ed Hastings and Paul Feeney, two uh, members of the leadership of IBEW 2222, all testified. Um, while it's a resolution, and typically we don't have a hearing before a resolution, this is something that I purposefully wanted to have the opportunity to have a formal setting. Um, and I do want to commend Verizon for showing up. Uh, they knew it would be a tough uh, room, and it certainly was, and I do appreciate their being here uh, to answer some questions. Um, it was obviously enormously disappointing to hear them officially say that there was no plan to expand the uh, uh, Fios fiber optic network in the city of Boston. Currently there are some parts of Dorchester where it is available as well as some parts uh, in the uh, uh, South Boston waterfront in the Seaport District. It's about 2,400 buildings in Boston um, where it's currently being deployed. You know, I, I, I was disappointed in uh, Verizon's response, but I was also uh, it really uh, gratified to hear uh, Mayor Walsh through uh, Joshua and, and Mr. Lynch talk about the desire to build a, and to, to, not to build, but to bring fiber optic technology and real broadband to the city of Boston. Um, if it can't be Verizon, we are certainly looking elsewhere. There are a number of other uh, companies we could go with, Google Fiber, for example. Some other municipalities have built their own municipal, fi uh, municipal broadband network. What we currently have, what I have, and I would venture guess most of you have, is DSL lines, uh, and that does not meet the minimum speed to qualify as broadband by the FCC. Uh, the Department of Innovation and Technology is currently mapping underground conduit and fiber optics to be used by the city or a private company. Uh, Josh has spoke at great length about ways the city can incentivize a company like Verizon or others um, to build here. And this is not only about helping our consumers. This is not only a consumer protection issue and offering real uh, competition to ratepayers, although that's important. It's also about making sure that businesses, the colleges, that universities, that hospitals have access to high-speed fiber optic networks. So uh, while it was disappointing to hear that Verizon was not looking to expand, there are other, are other options. Uh, this will be a lengthy process, but I know that Mayor Walsh and his team, and I know that all of us are committed to finding something that works. Uh, so it was a worthwhile hearing. For that, I would ask that we pass this resolution um, and continue to work. I think this body can take a real leadership role, not only closing that digital divide, but making sure that we're able to, to help students, to help businesses, to help hospitals thrive uh, in this great city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you to the Chairman for his leadership on this issue. Uh, thank you, Councilor O'Malley. Councilor Baker. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just want to commend first the Maker and also uh, Councilor McCarthy for, for, his, um, for his hearing well run. Um, make no mistake about it, this is a company that makes a billion dollars a month. Um, their, their, their investment into Boston would be about $500 million, but that would be returned out to them. They enjoy, they enjoy status of a utility company, and I, uh, for me, I don't think that they're showing the city of Boston the respect that we deserve. We should have Fios in this, in this country. This is, to me, looks like a union-busting um, plan underway here because if they did, if they did approve the Fios plan in Boston, the men and women of, of 22-22 that they have on the ropes right now would have to come back in and do all this work. So this is union-busting at its finest, my opinion, and I, I um, wanted to get up and just... State yep. my opinion. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Councillor Baker. Councillor Jackson. Uh, thank you very, very much. Um, I, I also want to note uh, that they don't actually pay taxes on the polls. Um, that is still <coughs> at, at, at the State House. Um, and there are many places where um, that they are taxed and uh, actually have lower rates than, than the city of Boston. Um, I think the other piece that we also need to begin to look at um, are technologies uh, outside of them. Um, there are uh, wireless broadband 
Um, there are many developing countries that ha have actually uh, moved um, towards that, and also uh, broadband over uh, power lines, is, which is an, another thing that people are considering. So I think we should, if we're looking at it as a, a city uh, um, um, run or acquired uh, utility, I think we should uh, begin to uh, think outside of the box and think about what is next, um, not only uh, what we currently have. Um, but I, I, I too, um, am very disappointed um, with uh, the lack of, of uh, uh, broadband uh, competition, in particular from Verizon. Um, thank you, Councilor Jackson. Councilor Yancey. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I rise, of course, to support this resolution and commend the maker. Uh, the digital divide is a reality in the city of Boston today, and it's our responsibility as the legislators for the city of Boston to address that disparity and inequity, and we should use the, the political and the economic strength of the city of Boston, including city government itself, uh, to ensure that our residents have access to this technology. Uh, I am uh, appalled, quite frankly, uh, for any uh, major corporation such as Vios simply to thumb its nose at the city of Boston. And we're in a position to exert some power and influence over uh, this particular uh, company as well as other uh, utilities. So I want to thank uh, the leadership of uh, Mr. O'Malley and ask that we unanimously pass this resolution. Thank you, Councilor Yancey. Councilor McCarthy moves um, passage or adoption of docket 1430. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Out the vote. the vote. Madam Clerk, would you please read the roll? Councillor Baker. Yes. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Siomo. Councillor Siomo, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Jackson. Yes. Councillor Jackson, yes. Councillor Lamatina. Councillor Lamatina, yes. Councillor Linehan. Yes. Councillor Linehan, yes. Councillor McCarthy. Councilor McCarthy, yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Presley. Councilor Presley, yes. Councilor Wu. Councilor Wu, yes. Councilor Yancey. Councilor Yancey, yes. And Councilor Zakem. Councilor Zakem, yes. Mr. President, we have a unanimous vote on docket number 1430. Uh, docket 1430 has been adopted unanimously. There are uh, 10 late, late file matters, which in absence of objection will be added to the consent agenda. Seeing and hearing no objections, the matters are so added. <clears throat> the chair moves adoption of the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed nay, the ayes have it, and the consent agenda is adopted. Uh, Councilor Siomo, for what purpose do you rise? Uh, unanimous consent to make a brief statement. Any objections? No objections, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of myself, Councilor Murphy, and Councilor Flaherty, uh, just last week we're going to read uh, her name into the record. Marguerite Fagan uh, came to the Veronica Smith Senior Center in 1993 to volunteer. I had just begun, uh, be became the di director at the Veronica Smith S Senior Center at that time, and we started to discuss her experience and qualification. She served as Kevin White's executive secretary for his entire 16 years in office. She held various high-level positions throughout city government until the day she retired. And when she, when, when we, she just said it in such a matter-of-fact way that I was like, wow, what a score. What kind of volunteer has that kind of qualifications? So she became a surrogate mother to me for those 22 years since, since then and a surrogate grandmother to my my two boys, and she recently passed away at 91, and she was just so active in the Alston Brighton community. You, you, if you were involved in anything in Alston Brighton, you knew who Marguerite Fagan was. Always a beautiful, warm smile, which will be sorely missed, and uh, someone that I had the privilege of uh, eulogizing at her funeral. Um, I just wanted to say goodbye, Marguerite. Thank you for everything you did for us, for the community and uh, rest in peace. Uh, thank you, Councilor Siomo. I'd ask all guests and all members to please rise as the council prepares to adjourn today's meeting in the memory of the following individuals.
For Councilor Siomo, Marguerite C. Fagan. For Councilor La Martina, David Finnegan. <clears throat> John Aca A John Acadepeni. Rose Toscano. Sandra Lee Sitia. For Council Linehan and Flaherty, James P. McDevitt. For Councilor Presley, Monica Jolivet. For Councilor Yancey, Terrence Yancey, Councilor Yancey's nephew. And for Councilor Zakem, Joe Rodeo Sr. A moment of silence, please. The chair moves that when the council adjourns today, it does so in memory of the aforementioned individuals and is scheduled to meet again on Wednesday, October 28th at noon. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. aye. All opposed nay. The ayes have it and the council is so adjourned. Thank you.